हेलो हेलो प्रोफेसर हेलो गुड टू सी यू गुड टू सी यू प्रोफेसर Okay, great. So let's wait for one more minute so that little more people join us. So how are you doing? Yeah, sure. Generally good. Staying safe. Yeah, good professor. Staying yeah, good safe. Professor. Yeah. Good, good, good to know. Great. So, so have you learned something out of this course so far? Uh, yes, professor. I also tried the uh, use case diagrams, activity diagrams, sequence diagrams. Okay, good. For, uh, for video streaming application. And you can see that the things have direct implications in your you know working area oh yes professor right i previously worked as a, a devops engineer where i didn't find any anything uh, regarding the uml but whereas in software engineering guys will used to do uh, uml okay for those things right right great so to, from today we are uh, we are planning to start little bit of coding right yes professor because uh, half of this course is uml and half of it is like uh, development or coding so so basically we want to see that part also sure. and then you know uh, they will go hand in hand for some time and towards the end i will teach you state modeling also uh -huh. okay so where are the rest of the people today so let's wait for one more minute and then we'll start yeah sure so so dinesh the deal is yeah. that uh, we we are using uh, or we would be using php yeah. as our programming language right so in the other yeah. course i am using node and javascript right Okay. So Node.js. So if you want to get hold of that technology, you are more than welcome in that class also, right? Oh, okay, thank you. It's a web right? programming, no? Web programming, yes. Oh, okay, okay. So, but here in this course, I have decided to go with the PHP. Okay. So let me give you a little bit of idea that you know where we are going to fit PHP in, right? Okay. And uh, then you know we'll go from there on. Yeah, okay. sure. So the deal is that PHP is the official server side language of the web. Uh -huh. So this is our web for example. Right? This is our web. And uh, on the web there are many servers, you know, which are connected with the web. right we may have facebook server we may have google server so they are like all these various servers right and definitely we clients are also connected with the with the web we clients are also connected with the web so these are the clients so this is the client right connected with the web so some people are still coming so what happens is what happens is that uh, the client sends a request to a server and server basically sends back a response right so this request can be say hey give me a web page maybe index.html 
and this server can give you the ecstatic web page right but internet or you can say that web is not only composed of static pages it has dynamic pages also rather you know the power of web lies in the dynamic pages right where you can have dynamic contents on the page right for example uh, you can have you can log into the facebook right and once you log into facebook right you are going to see a different content than you know maybe uh, menthan is going to see a very different content shri yash is going to see a very different content i am going to see a very different content so these are all like dynamic pages so dynamic pages are served via a server side language right so here we have a server side language it might be php it might be node.js it might be python right it might be so many other languages any one of them so these any of these languages running at the back end which makes it possible to provide dynamic pages right so i have selected php for this particular course because i love certain object oriented concepts being you know implemented in php right and i think i am very positive that after uh, c++ and uh, java by itself right probably c uh, probably php has the best, best you know layout for object oriented programming right so that is the reason that i want to uh, use php as the you know language of this course have you got the idea guys yes sir okay so let me so the deal here is that since you know we would be dealing with php means that there is no useful php without having web pages so i will give you a little bit of overview of html right if you already don't know who knows html very good shri yes you know html dhanesh do you know html uh, no okay, okay no problem right so we'll teach you a little bit of html right not its entirety right but like html a little bit of html if you want to get more knowledge about it html you know these lectures are being recorded and their their link is available to you right so you can go and uh, see my lectures on web programming and there you can uh, you know get get html and css better right so right now let me write a simple simple code for you so that we can understand that what is html and then you know later on we'll connect this thing uh, with php right so basically uh, you know from today on we are taking our slow start towards uh, programming side of this course got it guys yeah so the the code editor which i would be using in this course is uh, is atom right i love to use uh, visual studio code also but since this course is like simple simple course so i don't want to involve uh, you know more complicated id right so i would be using atom for this course right so the deal here is that since you know we uh, this php would be running at a server so we can have some online server over here but that creates a lot of you know time delays and issues so what i'm going to do is that i would be using a local server right so that local server i would be using is is vamp server so i would be using vamp server over here right i would be using vamp server right so uh, shri yash if you are interested to know node you can also join web programming lectures right thereby you can also learn node right this time in web programming i am using node js as a language okay yeah yes okay you are more than welcome anybody else you know if wants to join you know you are more than welcome okay so anybody having vamp server already installed with them very good yes, so okay dinesh you have vamp server installed already with you yes professor i installed 
why, why would you use web server when you don't work with HTML? Uh, I think it's, it's kind of a container to host the application with Apache and MySQL. Okay, no, but my question is that you don't, do you use web server or you just got it installed? No, no, I never use it. Okay, you never use it, right? Okay. okay, but you know that it is installed, right? I yeah. will see. I would like to see it whether it's running into your, uh, it's installed into your system or not. Would you like to share your screen with me, please? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, let me allow it. Uh, just a minute. Uh, yes. Okay, show me your desktop. Oh, great. Yeah, WAMP is there, right? Just double click WAMP or click WAMP. Okay, wonderful. Is red. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, okay, great. It has turned green, right? So WAMP is running with you. Anybody not running WAMP? I was damn sure. Okay, ZAMP is also good, right? ZAMP oh. is also good. Okay, great. So everybody is having a server, right? Very good, right? So once you are running a server, right? Stop share, please. Yeah. Stop share. And uh, let me share my screen. Okay. So let me share my screen and let me show you what I'm going to do here. That if you go to, if you go to your C drive, then WAMP64, then www, right? In this www folder, in this www folder, let's have a new folder over here. new folder and let me name it object oriented design and programming summer of 2020 right so this is your uh, this is your folder right so we will be working in this folder and let me open this folder into my editor let, let me open this uh, folder into the editor So where is, the, okay, yeah, here. So I say file, add project folder. And let me go to the folder. Where is your folder, guys? Fifth or sixth. Right. This one, right? Object oriented programming, uh, design and programming summer 2020, right? And select the folder. So we have just selected this empty folder. Within this empty folder, let me have a new folder over here. So this is HTML, or you can say basics. So basics.html, right? Basics dot b a s i c s right basics dot html so this is my folder over here right uh, this is not a is it a folder or it is a folder right so let me just rename it i don't need the extension here so this is basics right and within basics let me have a new file basic HTML and CSS dot HTML, right? Basic HTML and CSS dot HTML, right? So uh, once again, let me ask a little more, bit more. Uh, who should I ask? Okay, great, good to see you. Uh, your, how do you call your first name, my dear? Arun Teja? 
you are Arun Teja? Okay, you have to unmute yourself in order to talk to me. Yes, sir. My name is Arun Teja. Okay, Arun Teja, thank you. Uh, welcome to the course. So, question is that have you watched previous lectures videos, all of them? Uh, uh, unfortunately, I mean, I watched only the first video. Hopefully, I'll complete uh, in this week, sir. So yeah, definitely. All the videos. You are lagging a little bit behind, so please do this thing ASAP, right? This is very important. The second thing I want to ask you is that do you know HTML? I know the basics, sir. Okay, very good, right? And do you have RAMP server installed? Uh, no, sir, it's not installed yet. So please install, get RAMP server and install it in your system, right? And then do these steps which we are doing today, okay? Sure, sir. Great. And let me ask Avinash. Avinash, do you know HTML, CSS, basic CSS, HTML? No, sir. Okay. Uh, so basically, you don't know any of HTML? Uh, just basics of it. So just basics, right? So we'll start with the basics, right? And then we'll, uh, you know, uh, build on top of it. So please let me know if there's any issue, right? So those people who know HTML, they can relax a little bit, but we would not be like doing so many lectures on HTML, right? We would be covering it very swiftly, right? So HTML is a markup language, right? So basically HTML is used to mark up various portions of your web page, right? So that they look different or according to some particular things within the page, right? So say for example, first of all, we need to put the scaffold of our HTML document, right? So this is the document. Let me explain it a little bit. So on the top, we have this doc type HTML means that we are using HTML5, right? Means that we are using HTML5. Then look here, this HTML tag is starting. So this HTML tag is telling that this is our entire document, right? Starting from here, ending here. Within this HTML tag, we have this head tag, right? Head, can you see? It starts here, ends over here. So head has some, uh, you can say metadata or some in important information about this web page. But whatever you see within the viewport of the browser, it is placed in the body, right? It is present within the body, right? So within the body, say, for example, I want to uh, put some text. I can say that, hey, this is just a text line, right? So this is just a text line. So let me open this page in a browser. So we need to go to localhost and from localhost we'll go where object oriented design and priming summer of 2020, right? And there we'll find this folder basics and there we have this folder basic HTML and CSS and here we can see this line. So basically what is happening here is that my local VAM server is running right and basically I am sending that request to that local VAM server that hey you local VAM server go to this local VAM server and get this particular folder and from that folder go to this particular location this file and get the contents of these files and display them on the browser right Dinesh Okay, great. So now these are like, you know, very small, ugly contents, but now if we want to give them some formatting, maybe we say that, hey, this is our first heading, the top heading, right? So basically we'll say H1 top heading. So this is opening tag. This is closing tag, right? So this is top heading and we cut these contents from here and put them in this top heading. Right? So this is our H1, save it. 
and now as the browser will look at it okay this is heading one so i need to display it in a little different way right so it is going to display like this right browser knows this thing that hey this is my first heading or top heading right so i need to display it in a bigger way if i want to give little bit smaller heading right it is h2 a little bit more smaller heading it is h3 a little bit more smaller heading it is h4 a little bit more smaller heading it is h5 and finally we have h6 right so we have six headings right save it reload it right you can see this thing that we have heading 1 to heading 6 right if we want to put some some text you know general text so for that we have paragraph so we have for example this paragraph right we have this paragraph say we put some contents this is a paragraph for testing right so save it let's reload it right so basically you can see that we have got this paragraph over here right if we want to put some image maybe right we can put an image somewhere maybe before this paragraph we want to put an image right img is the tag for the image let's select some image from the web mm. maybe this image maybe let's have this image copy image location right so let's have this image so we say that hey we want to have the image and source of the image is this this is the image source and this is some alternate text if the image is not available right so then we 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 show this ph php image save it our screen readers will read it for you reload this right so we have got this image over here right so we have got this image over here great so the deal here is the deal here is that this h1 is a tag right so this is the starting part of the tag this is the ending part of the tag again this is h2 starting part and ending part right same is paragraph but image is such a tag which has starting part but no ending part so such tags are known as self closing tags right such tags are known as what these are known as self closing tags right we have many self closing tags for example one is image the other one is hr horizontal rule save it so let's reload it you will see that how does hr work right so we have got this horizontal line over here right and uh, and we have a break for example if we want uh, want uh, if we have this paragraph and we want this paragraph to break over here so we can have this break tag right if we put this break tag over here you can see right now there is no break in the paragraph but now if we reload you will find some break over there right you don't find any break yet why probably we did not save it right or maybe we put a break at such a point 
where the break is not visible in that sense. So maybe put another break. Save it. Reload. And now you can see that break, right? So paragraph is breaking and uh, you have the next line, right? So these are, uh, this was about uh, some basic tags, right? So here, look at it. This is tag H1. Starting here, ending right over here, right? Within the tag, for example, here, if you look into this image tag, this is something SRC is equal to this. So what is this? This is an attribute, source attribute. What is this? This is alt attribute, right? So basically attributes modify the behavior of that particular tag in some way or define the behavior of that tag in some way, right? For example, if you look into the HTML tag, here we have one tag dir, direction, and it's saying left to right. So we can also say right to left. If we say right to left and save it, and go back to your browser, and reload the page, you can see the entire page is now oriented from right to left, right? So basically you can imagine that this thing is for the, for the purpose that if we, have uh, some language which is written from right to left. So we, we should be able to uh, do that, right? So basically you can see that it is uh, going from right to left, right? Okay, if we, let's revert it, save it, right? And, uh, Let's reload the page. Reload the page, right? It is by, back in the normal format, right? Say, so basically HTML provides the basic skeleton of the page, right? Basic, basic skeleton of the page, right? But if we want to beautify our page, then, you know, we have CSS which comes into picture. Right? Are you guys getting me? Arun Teja, are you getting me? Yes, sir. Right? So basically, you know, and uh, Avinash, you said that you don't know HTML. Any question about it, please let me know. Yes, sir. Sure. Any question? No, sir. The nation, any question? No, sir. Okay, great. So basically, you know, this is the basic, basic HTML thing, right? Say, for example, we want to beautify some part of the page, right? Maybe we want to uh, beautify h1 right so we come over here and we give a tag with the name style right sorry we need to give that tag so we say style right and here we want to say select h1 right we want to select h1 and we say for example hey you h1 your color is red. Your color is red, right? Save it and reload it. You can see that H1 has taken the color red, right? You H1, you take the color red. Say for example, we come over here. Say we want to target an image. We say you image you take a width of 50% of your container, right? Save it, reload it. Now you can see that your image is bigger, right? It is taking 50% width of the container, right? We come back over here, maybe we can target the paragraph. We say, hey, you paragraph, your background your background is pink save it right and reload it you can see that paragraph has taken pink background right 
Are you guys getting me? Any question? No. Right? Say for example, we say you paragraph. Your font color. Your font color is going to be uh, maybe green. Right. So we are styling. You know, we are styling those. These styles could be meaningless for now. but we are styling right so you can see that it has taken the green color right now uh, we can come back over here we can say for example we want to style both h1 and h6 in the same way or maybe h1 and h2 the same way we say that both h1 and h2 your font color is red save it so comma is a separator so you can you will see that h2 is also red in color now right so basically these are styles so we can give styles in a separate in the same file as we are giving right now if we want we can give these styles in a separate file also right so for example we can come over here make a new file new file let's name it styles dot css and uh, let's do one thing we can cut this entire code from here and put it over here right so save it and reload the page Oh, it is all black and white. Where the style has gone? So we are going to CSS. Yes, definitely we have to link CSS, right? So we can come over here. We say that hey, we and you can if you want, you can just remove this tag now. We can say link. This is a relationship with style sheet, and the name is. styles dot css right name is styles dot css save it and now once again reload it and you can see that that styles are that that style is back right so once we are here right so if we want to see if something is not say working or we want to see say for example something is not working right say we can come over here. and maybe we change the url a little bit right so that it is wrong now and let's reload it right now you can see that image is no more displayed but here what is what can you see over here alternate you can see that php image so basically it is the alternate text which is being displayed now say for example you want to uh, you know resolve this issue that hey why is this image not being displayed so i right click over here i'm in uh, i'm in uh, my mozilla firefox and i say inspect elements now this has something to do with with this thing that uh, image is not coming from somewhere so one thing we can go we can go we can do is we can go to console and see that if there is some error in the console right reload the page so console is not giving any error but if we go to the network you can see right over here can you see this thing that it is it is asking for php.png and it is getting a response of 404 which means that image is not found can you check this thing please and moreover you will see this thing that okay if we reload it once again you can see this thing that here this is the local host you know your domain is and this is the particular file which you asked right and we got this file we got this file already cached let me let me just open it in a incognito window copy Maybe over here. Paste it.
right? And here, if we inspect elements, in the network. Let me expand it. So in the network part, let me reboot. Right? Can you see this? Actually, what ha what's happening here is that once it is cached, it does not give us uh, 200 uh, 200 response it gives us three or four because this page is already cached right let me make changes on this page so let me for example put a paragraph so that you can see that page is being served so paragraph and this page is changed now save it reload it right can you see this thing that it has got 200 response that uh, this page basic html css you know it has got it and then it asked for the style.css and this since style.css was not changed so the server said to the client that hey this is still the same style.css so this is 304 response right and then here it asked for the localhost for uh, not localhost is asked for this particular website for the image and image was not found so the response is 404 right and then what is this this is you know they asked for a favorcon and favorcon was served which is the web server favorcon and the response is again 200 have you got it any questions so far no problem so what is the problem? Problem is that the image is not found, right? So if we click over here, we can see that these are the details, right? These are the details and it is telling these details if we enlarge them a little bit and look through them carefully, look through them carefully, especially in the response part. In the response part, it is telling us that this image is not found. It means that something is wrong with the URL, right? Let us crack the URL and retry it. Save it. Reload the page. And this time you can see that the image response is again 200 and the image is found. Any questions so far? Anurag, you're good? Sorry, what is the name? Uh, Arun Teja. Yeah, we are good, sir. Okay, great. And Avinash? Yes, sir, good. Okay, great. Dinesh? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So basically, you know, uh, in this way, you know, we can examine any uh, issue within the page also. Okay, so let me keep on working on the same page. Say for example, say for example, let me make a new file, right? So, new file, uh, new folder rather. Let me make a new folder. HTML forms dot let me let me name it PHP dot PHP okay so extensions could be dot HTML dot HTM and if you want to run for some PHP code on your page you can use the uh, extension .php, right? So since I am, I would be using it uh, to run PHP code. So I have made the extension .php, but not within the folder name. Let me correct it. So 
So let me have a new file over here and let me name it HTML forms. Okay. Since this is a file, so we need to give extension also. Okay, so let me open this. Let me put some contents. So, for example, each one. So, let us know about forms. Maybe a paragraph. We say a form is used to get data input from a user, right? So let's open this page. Right, so this is your basic page. You know, it is telling us know about forms and form is used to get data from a user. So let me come over here. Let me put a form. Right, let's remove class because class is used for decoration purposes. I will, uh, maybe I will touch it over here, but not too much. Let's remove the action thing for now action uh, i will t i will let you know but for now let let me just remove it and method is post right method post uh, what does it mean i will let you know so so this is a form and within the form let me have some input input type text right so save it and let's see how does it look like Can you see we have got a space over here where we can we can input right where we can input but what we want to input you know it is not very helpful so if we want we can put a placeholder over here say that full name Right, save it, reload it, and now you can see that here we have the placeholder. So for example, I can write Avinash, ready, huh? A-V-I-N-A-S-H, ready. Right, so now the deal here is that we need to have some way to send this data to the server, right? Normally once we uh, get some input from the user, we want to send that data to the server, right? So what do we need over here? What do you think? How, how, how we are planning to send this data to the server? Yes, yes please. Huh? Say it again. Okay. Yes, please talk. Uh, tell uh, me again. Get and post. Yeah, get. yeah, yeah. But but you know, just forget about get and post, right? Tell tell me this thing that if we want to send this data to the server, what should we have over here? Button. Something. Something. We need to have a button, right? We need to have some button, right? So let let me put that button over here. So I can come over here, I say that this is a button, right? So this is a button, type is button, name is button, right? And uh, maybe send, right? So we have got a button. Okay, let's come back over here, reload it, 
now we have this send button right once we put this mnh ready over here we can send it right nothing is happening because we have not coded it yet right but you can see that this button is here which is trying to send something right now if you in actual wants to send something you need to declare this button not of type button but of type submit right let me see let me show you so if it is of type button if i come over here reload the page right right click inspect elements if i go to network traffic right let me reload again so this page is coming right this page is coming right but if i put avinash ready here and press send you can see that nothing is happening right no network traffic is being generated right but if i come over here and i say hey button you are of the type submit right your type is what your type is submit now if we come over here reload it right and we say send now you see that there was some traffic being generated right so for example you can see right over here so the nature of the traffic is post can you check this thing right over here this is what this is post right so basically what is get get is that once you want to get some page from the server what is post post is that you want to send some data to the server right and why is it post it is post because here you said that method is post and where it is trying to send this data it is trying to send this data to the same page because there is no action item over here you saw that there was action over here right so since there is no action means that submit this data to the same web page otherwise you have to mention the complete uh, you know path to that web page right okay so let's see what is going over there so this name is button right let's say that this is name is send button send button right we come back over here reload the page reload the page and say we say raj sahu right and we press send so you can see that something is being sent right so we click over here and we want to see that what was being sent so this is the response this is the request and within request you can find this is this is request right this is request and within the request request you can find that here look form data send button right so this send button is going right why is that name is not going right we entered a name over here and you say, saw that name is not going why is that name is not going anybody tell me because we have not given we have not named this but this input right so for example we can say that this is full name right this is full name right and now if we save it and reload the page and now if we put over here full name 
maybe Frank Lewis, right? And we want to send it, right? So look, if we click this particular traffic and go to form data, you can see that full name is not going, right? So once you want to send some item to the server, you have to name it. Otherwise it is not going to go, right? Similarly, if you want to have some value to this send button, you can do this thing over here. You can say send button, your value is one maybe, right? Save it. reload it and if you click this post now and so we did not reload so now once again we say for example uh, John Smith and we want to send so if we send this thing we go to this particular post you can see this thing that full name is John Smith right john plus smith and here send button value is one any questions so far no look since this is a master's level class so i go a little fast right but my speed should not compromise your understanding so if you are not quite getting something right or you think that you i need to cover something more in detail just ask me question. Don't let it go. Yes, Dinesh, any question? No, Professor. You're good? Yes. You are comfortable? Yes, Professor. Uh, uh, Mr. Teja, you're comfortable? Yeah, I'm good, sir. Thank you. Okay, let me ask one more guy who I know does not know this HTML that much. Avinash, you're good? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm good. Any question? Any 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 question? You know, just don't let it go. Please ask it. Sure, sir. Okay, rest of the people, you're happy. Ankit? Yes, sir. Good? Yeah. Okay. Anybody who is not happy? Manthan, you're good. Okay, great. Yeah. Right? So basically, you know, we are submitting this data to the server now, right? We are sending this data to the server, right? So now at the server end, we need to process it also. Does it make sense? So once this data is going to the server, right? Now, who is going to process it? PHP is the one who is going to process it, right? So we come over here in the page. And right at the top of the page, we open a PHP tag. So once we want to execute PHP, we want to have PHP tag. So PHP lives in PHP tag. And PHP tag can be anywhere at the top, at the bottom, in the middle, anywhere. So whatever we send via post, whatever we send via post goes into a variable with the name dollar underscore post, right? So we say dollar underscore post, and this is an array sub full name because its name is right over here, full name. So sub full name and say for example, we want to display it. Once we want to display anything via PHP, the command is echo. So we want to echo the full name, right? So we save it, we come back over here in the browser. We come back over here in the browser. Let's cross it out. Any name, maybe uh, 
Julia Roberts, right? So, and send it. You can see that this Julia Roberts has been displayed over here. Can you check this thing, right? Uh, maybe let's try one more. Say Tom Hanks, right? Tom Hanks, send. So Tom Hanks has been displayed over there. Right, so let me let me draw a diagram to show that what's happening over here, so that we we come on the same page, right? Right, guys. So the same server and client model. So from here, from the client side, from the client side, we are posting some data. So this data is going to the server, right? There, you know, this data, since we have posted it, so this data over here is available in an array, dollar underscore post, right? And there we are accessing that data, right? And over there we are processing it and for now the humble processing it, that we are putting that data back on the screen, right? By doing this echo thing, right? And that data is being posted back on the screen. And this is what we are seeing over here. Right, so basically it is processing that data and then sending us the response back. Now this particular web page is no more a static web page. It has already become a dynamic web page. Any questions so far? Okay, let me put a few more fields over here. For example, we say we come over here. Okay, let me, let me before I put more things over here, let me do one more thing. Let me reload this page. Okay, now once you reload this page, you can see over here that we have got a notice over here. And that notice is saying that undefined index full name. Why is it so? Very good, because we did not send any input, right? So this is the first time it is loading, right? It tried to get it, but could not get it. So it gave us this minor error, right? So if we want to avoid this error, we must avoid it. And what should we do? We come over here, we say, if, everybody knows if, right? If is set, this thing, if this thing is set, then echo it, otherwise do nothing. Are you guys getting me? Right, save it. Let's come back over here, reload it. That error has gone, right? So let me put it back. So maybe uh, Shah Rukh Khan, right? So sent, right? You can see that name is being printed up there. If you will not send anything, it will not print anything up there. Have you got it guys? Any questions so far? Any question? No, sir. Okay, great. So let's come back over here. Let's put one more field over here. So maybe we we'll come over here. We say input. Say type is email. Name is email. 
there is no value by default and placeholder is email. Maybe we can have another input. Type is password. Name is password. No value. Placeholder is password. Right? Got it? Save it. And if we come back over here, reload. Right? You can see this thing that we have full name, we have email, we have password, and we have send button. Right? If we come back over here, uh, inspect element, go to network tab. Let's put something, maybe we can have like uh, Tom Hanks. Email is tomhank at gmail.com, right? And password says 123 and uh, this is network and we press send, right? And you can see this thing that there is another post request right over here and if you go over here and see the request now we have all these fields full name email password can you see this thing right so all three of them are going right all three of them are going and we can get all three of them over there at the server end right so we can come over here at the server and we say if is set, one thing this is set, right? And then we want to say that some other people are also set, like for example, dollar underscore post sub email, comma, dollar underscore post sub password, right? If all three of them are, are set, then go ahead and echo them, right? So echo post uh, full name, echo post email, echo post password, right? Save it all and let's see what do we get over here now. So we come over here, say for example, Frank Lewis, email is fl at gmail.com, password is say one, two, three, Send, right? You can see this thing that all three of them are written over here, Frank Lewis, fl at gmail.com and 123. Are you guys getting it? So basically this, course, this lecture is now for everybody because those people who are in my web programming class, I have not touched this thing over there, right? So this lecture is for everyone, right? So. So this is being printed over here. If I want them to be printed in the next line, I can come over here and I can say dot, dot is string concatenation, right? Dot, and we can say br, which is the break tag, right? And let me copy and paste them over here. save it, right? And then let me reload. So full name, uh, anybody else? Maybe Ankit, Ankit, 
email is ak at gmail.com password is one two three four five six send so you can see this thing that uh, they are being placed on top of each other now because we have placed that break over there right br is a is a tag for break right if we want to add some more text over there we can do so also we can say echo here we can put full name and then dot which is string concatenation then we can say email then a dot which is string concatenation and here we can say password and then don't forget to put a dot which is again string concatenation we can you know ignore this break if you want right save it and let's come back over here let's try it right so maybe dr zab e name is email is drzab at machabat.com password is say 1234567 etc send right so you can see this thing that now the contents are like this so in this lecture you learnt exactly that how do these forms work any questions so far okay so i will give you 5 minutes break because it is a little bit overwhelming right uh, so and you can i will keep on my screen sharing right over here you can see the entire code if you want you can try this code yourself right you can see the entire code in on your screen you can try this code and i will come back after 5 to 10 minutes right so that you have the idea that how you are using this code maybe try to modify this code a little bit right and we will get you in 5 to 10 minutes right so please do try this code this code is on the screen right guys so let me just uh, do one thing uh, let me pause the recording so that we are not recording just blank things so so guys i'm back so did you do did you try this code i just started professor just installed uh, the extensions in autumn okay okay take your time please Look, the deal is that once I I teach a master level course, I don't start from the declaration of variables or things like that, right? Because I know that you people already know that those things. I definitely come to those things at a higher level later on. But uh, with master level, I jump in the middle of the course and uh, try to steer from there. But if you have any issue with it, anything you are not understanding, let me know. i will explain it as i go arun teja you have a question my dear no sir okay avinash do you have a question dinesh you have no, a question sir. no professor Are you very sure about it? Uh, sure. Okay, great. Uh, Ankit, you have a question? No, sir. Okay, great. So, right now I am putting all these things on the top of the page, right? If I want, I can do one more thing. I can comment them all, or maybe uh, maybe like this. right or if you don't want you can like this 
I can do this thing. Look, variables in PHP are characterized by this dollar sign. So I can say dollar full name, right? I can say dollar full name and uh, in PHP recommendations say that use underscore as a separator, right? So we say dollar full name is equal to this thing, right? I can say dollar email is equal to this thing. I can say dollar password is equal to this thing. Right, say I don't echo them on the screen. So I just comment them all. Now these are in the variable form now. They are not being placed at the top of the screen, right? So we have just, you know, placed them in variables. These local variables, full name, uh, last name, etc. Full name, uh, email and password. And I come over here. and give out some names, maybe uh, John Smith. So this is telling that this, it should be email, right? So maybe John Smith at Gmail. So this is a very weak check, HTML check, right? Password is one, two, three. By the way, this dot, 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 you know, password is showing as dot, dot, dot is a protection. Yes, sir. What sort of protection it is? In the place of placeholder, we have written password. So that's why it's showing. So it is protection against who? The uh, other. But no, besides you, like. Yeah, it is a, it is a protection against an onlooker, right? Somebody is yeah. watching you uh, over your shoulder. So it is a protection from that guy, right? Otherwise, this is not a protection. So for example, you can go here, inspect element. And where is this read? Just change back to text. Yeah, absolutely. So you can come here, for example, and you can change this type of text from password To text, right? And it, is, it would be visible. Actually, you must have seen that button where you can see the password, right? So this button, you know, basically works on the same principle. So this is not a protection, right? I will talk about protection later on, but this is not at all a protection. This is just a weak protection against an onlooker. Right, Dinesh? Yes, brother. Okay, if I send this data now, now this data will not be shown on the top because we are not, uh, you know, displaying it, right? Say for example, we come over here, let's use this data. So let's change this. So we say, welcome and then maybe we, have another H1. And maybe this is ending over here. H1. Right. And right now it would be displayed like this. Right, something like this, welcome, comma, let us know about forms. Let's modify it a little bit. For example, we can come over here, welcome, space. And here we open a PHP tag. 
and here we say echo dollar first name right so let's see how does it look like now so for example we can come over here we say full name is uh, john smith email is john smith at gmail.com or g very weak check password is one two three send oh undefined variable first name right so this is it is saying that undefined variable first name right so something has gone wrong so we have echo first name right why is this undefined because for the first time it will it will come you know this first name is not defined right rather it is full name right so this full name the first thing is that it should be full name so even if it is full name you can see that when it will come for the first time this full name will not be defined So it will still the full name is not defined, right? So one thing we need to put that protection over here. We can say is set dollar full name. If it is set, then echo the full name. otherwise echo null otherwise echo nothing okay so why is this giving me this so just a minute what it does it say unexpected colon this is not unexpected so echo full name So let me put this in brackets. There is some syntax error here. Should not be here. Okay. Shri Yesh, do you know what is this error? Uh, I, don't know. Hmm? Uh, I don't know. Okay, why is this error coming? It should not come. Oh, echo is set. Sorry. I think uh, we have to. Full name, otherwise null. Okay. Uh, try to put uh, both conditions, uh, both value in bracket. Just a minute. Okay. So actually, you know, it is saying that you are not using echo over here, so it was kind of mistake. So basically, this is the thing that we are saying that if full name is set, then display the full name. Otherwise, don't display anything, right? So save it, and let's come back at the page. reload it and that error is gone so we come over here we say full name is frank lewis email is fl at gmail.com password one two three then so welcome frank lewis right so basically basically now we have started making dynamic pages that data is going from client side to the server, right? There we are processing it, and then we are getting the response according to that input. Definitely, this is very, very humble kind of, uh, uh, you can say dynamic processing, but the beginning of everything is humble, right? We will very soon, you know, convert this humble thing into quite a bit of meaningful programming. Any question for now?
No, sir. Okay. So if since I, I think that this, this was quite a bit of overwhelming lecture, so I will stop over here and uh, I will continue from here tomorrow on, right? So, but I will send you this code so that if you want to give it a try, you should be able to give, uh, you know, try it. Uh, later in this course, maybe from tomorrow on, I will teach you how to use Git and GitHub so that we, we can use Git and GitHub to share the code. Right? Ganesh, do you know GitHub? Oh, yes, Professor, I have an idea. You have an idea, very good. Uh, Avinash, do you have the idea about Git and GitHub? Yes, sir. Very good, very good. Menthan, you know this thing. Shri Yash knows this thing. And uh, who else? Uh, yeah. Teja, you know this thing? I know, sir. Oh, very good. So basically we need not to, so let's do it right now, right? So instead of doing it from tomorrow, let's do it right away, right? So we come over here on the command line and we say cd dot dot cd object oriented design and programming summer 2020 right and here we say git in it right so it has initialized the empty repository so we say git status Right, so these are not committed yet. So we come over here, we say get at dot. So everything is added, get status, right? So these are the files. We say get commit minus M. So our first comment, right? So get status, right? So we are on branch master and the thing to commit. So we come back over here. Let me make a repository, go to GitHub, github.com, right? And uh, let's create a new repository. So repository name is object or design programming summer 2020. And this is a public repository and create repository. So this repository is created. Let me copy this URL, copy. And uh, let me have this get remote. So nothing. So we have command get remote add origin. Right? So this is so get remote. So origin is added. So now I have got a repository. So I use get what is the command guys get push. push minus u right origin step slash master can somebody you know verify this command i think it's only origin let me see so get push origin space master right get push minus u origin space master right not slash i'm sorry so origin space master right now it is going to the online repository it has gone right so if now, now you want, you can go to your uh, folder where you want to clone it. You can copy this. So please uh, note down this uh, URL.
Dinesh, have you noted it down? Yes, sir. Okay, please share your screen. Everybody has noted it down. Right? So stop share. So let me go to security screen share. Yes. So please share your screen. So here, you know, just create a new folder somewhere. And I will teach you workflow also next time. Okay. Go to a new folder where you want to have this code. You can just delete this entire code from here, right? Okay, this is the code, right? So copy the path. This entire path. Just click on the right side. No, 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 no. Copy the path, go back to the folder. Okay, yeah, here, now copy it. Yes. And open the command prompt. So CD space. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm into the folder, I think. You are already in the folder? Okay, yeah. right. And here you can say git clone and then uh, put the URL https colon github.com github.com slash machomath slash odp summer spelling macho spelling dot git huh macho spelling machomath m a yeah macho spelling are m a c h o Oh, great. Thank you very much. Enter. Right. So it, uh, it has cloned the entire repository. Right. And you have got all the files. Okay. Great. Good. Wonderful. This was so great. You know, everybody knew about Git and we have got the code, you know, right away. Okay. Well, very good. So everybody, you are confident that you are able, you would be able to get the code. Yes, sir. So yes, please sir. try this code yourself and do let me know by tomorrow in the class. Okay. Yes, sure. So this is your homework, right? See, see you then tomorrow. Take good care of yourselves. I'm available for my office hours. If you want to have me for office hours, you can stay in this conversation. Otherwise you can simply drop out. Thank you very much. You have a good day. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Take care.